All right, so here's the vehicle we're working with. It's a 1994 Econoline. It's got a 302 um, flat tappet V8 with a AOD transmission, 355, and it is a dog. So we're trying to pull this trailer and um, it's not really working too well. So the first thing you wanna do is get the tires off of the vehicle, get it secured on jack stands, wheels chocked in the front. You wanna make sure you're doing this safely. Once you're set up, you're gonna remove the diff cover. What we are working with here is a Ford 8.8, and that means the uh, ring gear is 8.8 .8 inches. And I believe, huh, I don't wanna misquote myself, I think it's a 30 spline pinion, and I think the axle shafts are they're 31, I believe. Don't quote me on that, folks. On most of your Ford rear ends, you're gonna have a tag that looks like this. What we're concerned with right here is this 3L55. That means 355 gearing. The L indicates that it is a limited slip rear end. 88 is the year of manufacturer. I believe these will tell you the uh, the date and week code, and this may give you a location also. I'm not really sure. We're basically looking at these two right here. You have 10 bolts holding this cover on, and these 10 bolts are half inch. And the equipment that we're using today, uh, we got the, the, the complete differential kit and the ring and pinion here from JEGS. I'll let you get a look at the UPC and the stock number on that. We're going to need a, uh, a beam style torque wrench that is also inch pounds as well as foot pounds. We have both of those. You're going to want a breaker bar, a dial indicator, a magnetic base. You're going to want a micrometer. Um, we also have a couple different pinion bearings. We'll get into why later as well as uh, differential fluid and slip additive. We've got a bearing puller and we've got a race uh, installer. Let's get to work. All right, so what you're going to need to pull these uh, these this, these flange bolts off. It's 12 millimeter, 12 pointed bolts. And a uh, box end of a 12 millimeter wrench will do the trick. They are on pretty tight, folks. Uh, um, they will come out. They will come out. Again, make sure you mark everything. I've got the drive shaft marked on this side. I've got the housing marked on this side because I've had to roll it once. Um, that'll get them out. All right, success. So once you got your drive shaft off, you just get it pinned up in the air there. You got your pinion bolt. That is one and one sixteenth inch. Um, we are not going to take this off just yet. We're gonna pop that diff cover off, get the fluid out. Um, I am do a marking on the, the, the ring. I kinda wanna see where the teeth, you know, where the imprint is. Um, so we're gonna put some paint on the teeth before we even dig into it, see what it's looking like. And then we're gonna drop everything out. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Hey, have you got your girlfriend helping you? These women do not like the smell of this stuff. Oh, Most of the men don't either. We're going to put a little bit of pressure on this once we get there. Okay. Then we're going to 
come come back forward All right, so we can see right there we have wear towards it's going down good enough so our, our depth is good but it's, it's going a little bit towards the uh, towards the heel not as much towards the toe so more more towards the heel then if we go down here look at our, our co side our co side is in towards towards the toe so coasting towards the toe driving towards the heel which would tell us right now that our pinion depth is off by just a skosh but we've got no problems whatsoever with this with this uh, axle All right, so right now what I'm doing, this is on the original pinion bolt. I have not taken it off yet. I just want to see what the specs are before I actually get working on anything, being that it's original. So right now we have our rig set up here from the pinion bolt onto a torque wrench, beam style. So we're going to look at what the rolling resistance of this is as we turn it. So as I'm looking at it, I'm seeing about 17.5. All right, I can't speak this way for y'all's projects, but that pinion nut in the front came off really easy for me. Um, I mean, almost too easy. Next thing we want to do, there is a eight millimeter bolt right here. This comes out and then there's a pin that goes into this carrier. The pin slides out. At this point, we should be able to take the C-clips out and then pull our, pull our axles out of the differential. All right, so as you guys see, if you're cheap and you don't have a magnet and you're in the middle of a job, just take your, your magnetic base, put something that's like iron on it. That'll work to actually pull those C-clips out. Um, also on these clips, you'll notice that one edge of this is gonna be sharper than the other. One's gonna be kind of a beveled edge. From what I can see on this side, sharp edge goes in, the kind of rounded edge goes outward. One thing to add on the end of your axle shafts where those C-clips actually attach to them, if you find a uh, rubber O-ring in there, those are only in place for the initial assembly from the factory. If they're damaged or they're not present or only one's present, there's nothing to worry about as far as replacing those. You can reinstall without those rubber O-rings in place. All right, so now that we got our axles out, we're gonna go ahead and, and take these caps off. Now I've went ahead and marked them. I did not have a punch, so I simply used a chisel, or I'm sorry, a crowbar as a chisel and a hammer. I just put one indention here, two indentions here, or a bunch of little indentions, but two main ones. That just lets me know one and two. And I put those indentions at the top of the cap. Okay, and that appears to be a three quarter. And we're going to take those off. We're going to slip our carrier out. Once we have that off, we're going to take these shims. We're going to measure shims on both sides. We're going to measure the total. And we'll uh, get that carrier out, start working on the, the bearings, races, and the new gears. All right, folks. So we got the carrier out. We got the carrier bearings out. And if you can see, right there 
piece of a bearing race actually uh, came flying. It uh, it went Bluetooth, and uh, actually was bleeding pretty good from it too. Matter of fact, I've still got a little bit of blood on both both my arms right there from it. Um, a little word to the wise, man. Um, we replaced these bearings because uh, they came in the kit. They, they looked great. We had no problems with them. We could not get them off to save our lives. We actually had to go through and cut both of them um, and basically get them to split so that we could get them off. Um, it, it took it took a bearing puller um, and almost broke broke both attachments on it. Uh, we, we put fire on it, you know, we tried heating it up, we tried shocking it, we tried all sorts of stuff and nothing really worked. So, my, my word to the wise is do not replace those if you don't have the proper tools. And as you see, I don't have the proper tools, but I did buy some proper tools to do this and even those weren't really up for the test, uh, up, for the, uh, up for the match. So, uh, we used the old Diablo grinding wheel and took them off. We got the, um, most of you probably have a actual press, um, but this right here is some, some two by fours with some five eighths uh, threaded rod and a six ton jack, um, totally OSHA approved. So all, all we did was loosen up all of our, our ring gear bolts. We left them just one turn in. We put that into our press. We put blocks of wood over those bolts and use those to punch the old ring gear out and now we're going to use uh, two of those old bolts just to get our threads and everything held up in here and then we're going to uh we're going to press that into place also stop right there so in this video you see me using a kind of DIY press that I made myself that's not gonna cut it you guys not for this project I actually went down and bought a 12 ton shop press in order to complete this project so in hindsight there's a couple tips I want to give you to help you get through this a little bit easier if you're gonna go ahead and start this first things first do not try to remove those carrier bearings with a puller. If you have new bearings, if you have a master kit, cut them off. When it comes to these carrier bearings, either leave them in place if they're in good condition or go ahead and cut them off from the start. Don't even try to use a jaw type puller to get those off. When it came to doing those carrier bearings, we tried to heat them in the oven to 200. We tried oiling them. We tried hammering them. Um, we tried numerous different things, nothing worked. Once we got the shop press, it made easy work of all of this. When you're installing new carrier bearings, always know that you can't, you can just lay the bearing itself flat on the press. You're not going to press on the outside of that bearing housing. You can actually move it while you're pressing it. However, it's not going to seat flush with the bottom of that carrier. You've got to put the race itself over it. That's going to allow you to press it fully onto the carrier. When you go to install the new pinion bearing onto the pinion shaft, you can use one of those old carrier bearings as a driver because it, it'll go right around the inside of the pinion bearing and then just use a piece of PVC. I think I used, I want to say I used a piece that was two inches it might have been a piece that was like a little bit over an inch and a half. In the beginning of this video, you see that I had two Timken bearings. And the reason why one of them, I was going to go ahead and egg it out and use it as a setup bearing. I ended up not doing that. I went ahead and just pressed one on. After I was able to press the, the first one on so easily, my idea was if I had to pull it apart and shim it out, then I would simply open it up and make the setup bearing at that point. 
Um, lucky for us, the install actually went perfect. Everything lined up perfect with the stock shims, so we didn't have to do that. Getting that new crush seal, if you're using crush seals on the, uh, on the pinion, that new pinion uh, crush seal is a absolute bear to overcome to get that crush to start. Um, in order to do it, I used a breaker bar, a half inch breaker bar, 18 inches, and I used a hydraulic jack in order to turn that breaker bar. And I was getting about 30 degrees of flex on the breaker bar. All right, we're back. We got our back, we got our, our pinion preload set to 20 pounds. We've got our, our gear backlash set to 12 and we're marked. And luckily we didn't have to do a whole lot to get it to those specs. <laughs> Cause man, this, this job is, is kind of a bear you guys. Okay, we're gonna hook, hook this on here and turn the axle and okay. And then we come back. And when you're doing that, try to uh If you can, try to put a little bit of resistance on it. You guys see that out there in, in YouTube land? Yeah, but you can see that. Alright, so now it's time for us to Take these bolts back off. We're gonna lock tight them up, get everything back in, and throw this bad boy back together. During break in, every time we take it out, I've got an infrared uh, thermometer that I carry with me. After about 15 20 minutes of driving, I pull over and I hit the outside of the housing with that thermometer just so that you have an idea. The numbers that I'm pulling, whether it's in city or on the highway, no matter what speed I'm at, at the center of the, uh, the differential cover. I'm, I'm hitting 150 degrees Fahrenheit. Also, it's a good idea to hit both sides of that cover as well. If you got a bearing that went in bad or a bearing that's faulty, you're going to get additional heat. You're going to be able to see that just by hitting the sides of that differential cover with that, uh, with that temperature gun. If you have an increase, I would say anything over about 10, 15% on, on, on one side versus the other, you probably want to look at that. And when it comes to taking those pinion races out, it just makes easy work of it. Just get yourself a bar, even like a jack handle. Get in there and you'll see on both of those races at 3 o'clock and 9 o'clock, there's going to be a little cutout. And that's meant for you to get something in there. Just hit each side a couple times. Those are going to pop right out for you. As long as you have the correct tools to do this job and you understand what incorrect backlash looks like and what incorrect pinion depth looks like, I think you're pretty good to go. And there's plenty of guides online and resources on the internet to help you identify those things. Also, if you have any questions, concerns, any comments or things that you think could help me in the future, feel free to reach out. I love to, to help out when I can. If you have a question that I haven't answered in this video, and I can give you a little bit of additional advice, I'd like to do that. I want to thank everybody for checking this video out. If I've given you some information that can help you down the road, go ahead and give it a like. Subscribe to the channel. You might see something else in the future that I've done that may be able to help you out again, especially with this van. we got a lot of stuff that comes up that has to get done. So maybe we can help you out on some other projects as well. All right, thanks again, everybody. Bye.